or your your I did yes. So you were yeah, experienced it? Experienced, yeah. yeah. You have your own customers I though. I have on over the years plus more. Loyal customers. Very loyal customers. Yeah. You'd have customers maybe for the last thirty years or oh, so. Forty years. Right. And a what lot of them have died though, a lot of the older people are gone. Of course they would have. Yeah. yeah. And to me what would be the main things you'd be selling now? Oh it's all men's wear and footwear. Never got into the ladies, thanks Mr. God. And would you do a gentleman's suit now or that sure? Oh yes, saw oh, suits are oh, sure. My husband did a very big trade in suits. Is that so? Oh very big. He, they came from far and near to he was great to measure for suits. Oh, and he would have made the organised the making of the suit oh, then as well? Of course, all the factories. Factories in Limerick and Dublin and here and there. And he did After Christmas time, I'd see maybe 20 or 25 suits lined up there for people, and at Easter time, the same. Now we have Jerry Burke here in Gart. Jerry, you have a lovely mixed grill here of a shop. A bit of everything, like yourself down in Levin. <laughs> You have much better range though. Oh, not really, no, it's just bits and pieces. Right, and uh, how long are you in business here now, Jerry? 1841. And was it always a hardware or? It was a pub and a grocery at one stage, and then we branched into the hardware. Yeah, a bit of animal peas and a bit of pit food, and this time of the year now we have our sweet potatoes and that kind of thing. And all this kind of stuff? Yeah, different times of the year you have different types of stuff, you know. Great, it's great, a great service to the locality. Ah, sure, it's just one of those small things, like, you know. Yeah. We used to be flooded yeah. one time, but thankfully now we haven't been flooded since 95. And why did the water actually come in around here? Oh, I did, yeah, you're standing in two or three inches of water now when we were flooded. Is it? And was that the river then overflowing? That's right, yeah. It just actually and come up through the floors. My, and how long did it, how long did the water stay in the... Oh, well, yeah, it's been Christmas upstairs. It was up the whole thing. Jerry Cadden here in the early to late shop in Gort. Jerry, you had a lot of Brazilians around here for a while. I was sure there was a share of them, you know, I suppose they reckon there was over 1500 at one stage here in Gort. We, I suppose we missed them in, definitely in the shop business because mm. every day you have such an amount of them in now, you know. Mm. I believe you were very good to them, Jerry, and you helped them out a lot. Oh, we did, you know, if they'd come in asking you, you know, if there's any bit of work there or there, you know. Yeah. If just, if someone come in and ask you, they'll give you a number there and pass it on. <laughs> but this is their shop for them. Any time I passed, I would see a few Brazilians outside the shop. It was lovely oh, to see them. Yeah, sure, we had a... We used to... A uh, call card there for them, which was quite good, and they used to come for it, you know, just to give them lots of minutes for Brazil, you know. Mm. I suppose that was one point. It's a big attraction. Out. I think it might have been yourself now. <laughs> but yes. Now we're here this evening with John Sullivan at Sullivan's Hotel and Gort. John, how long are you here in this hotel and Gort? Shane Dead bought the hotel back in 1966 and he opened it officially after extensive refurbishment back then in 1967. And then by 1970 he built on what we now know as a function room and the, the nightclub images nightclub which was previously the red rose in the good old days of the earlier romantic years yeah i must come to meet you in the lovely view that's here in the bar window looking out on the street that's fabulous yeah apparently uh, and i'm told uh, it hasn't been confirmed to me but and it's something i should research is that jack yates painted a very famous painting apparently of the square um, of the yates family and uh, i suppose in today's world of art, the painting is probably worth more now than the building is, ironically. 
But that being said, at the time the restaurant was on the first floor of the hotel and uh, obviously it was a vantage point that he was able to paint the good old market and fair days that took place in court. And yeah, a lot of people, like you've just said, comment on the, the view from the window. It's a, it's a moving picture, as I like to describe it. It's always There's always some activity. Yeah. And John, just to go back to the early on, you spoke about the hotel in 1966. Do you know how much it cost that time? In 1966, I have no problem telling you that it was a princely sum. And we must remember that the hotel stopped just shortly behind where you're standing now. So in fairness to, to Dad and Mum, they extensively built on to what we now know to be the restaurant, the kitchens, the function rooms, and the now nightclub. But in that year era, it cost thirteen thousand four hundred and fifty pounds. That's the money that time. Mm. Well, it had a, it came with its own orchard, so I suppose there was a there was a side to it. And would you believe in the car park at that time there was swans because there was a, a stream coming off the Gord River that allowed the swans to make their way up. So. It came with its old wines. The wild swans of Cool were well situated in Sullivan's, what's now known as Sullivan's car park. Yeah. Now your father passed away there recently in the Lord of Mercy. But I wonder why did he buy Sullivan's Hotel? I wonder what tempted him to buy this hotel or do you know the history of that? I do indeed, Shane. Um, funny enough, my mother comes from County Leitrim. Dad is a West Cork man. Um, we were travelling, we were back in holidays, uh, back in 1966, Dad and myself, and I was getting sick in the car on the journey between Cork and Leitrim, so much so that he decided to uh, stay in Gort for the night. We, we checked into what we all knew in the past as Glynn's Hotel, but at 7 o'clock in the evening, they were unable to facilitate him with a boiled egg that he wanted to get for me. So when he found out that they weren't able to do the boiled egg, he walked downtown to where we now reside today and uh, old Granny Lally, God rest her, she was, she was the one who took on the, the boiling of the egg for me and in the process of it she told Dad how she was trying to sell the place for a number of years, I believe, and one thing led to another and a few months later the, the, the Lally's Royal Hotel became Sullivan's Royal Hotel and the Lally family were and still exist, Marita and her family, she's now married to Greg London, were a great, great family and uh, it was a pleasure. I know that Dad always spoke very highly of Paddy Lally, who was the original owner of the hotel and indeed great memories and stories are told of the same character. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was really just by chance you just, you landed in Garfield? Yeah, yeah. ironically it's, it's bang smack in the middle. There's a difference I think of two miles between where Dad comes from in West Cork and where Mum comes from in, in Leach from a place called Kilty Clark. Yeah. About eight miles outside Manor Hamlet. I'm Very sure you've heard tell of it. The halfway house. Yeah. So, exactly. Gee, great. It is. Lovely story. Yeah. It's a family business. Mm. It's a family business. We're here in O'Callaghan's news agency and we have Geraldine here behind us. I must come to meet you at the shop, it's lovely and tidy and everything's there and you have a great selection of magazines. And if you need any magazine we just order it in for you. Whatever. Oh, it's yeah. a specialised magazine you yes, can get. Yes. That's great service. Yeah. And I see you have great help here too with these. Of course we have this Maria game. and Alex. Yeah. And Eva herself there behind you. Yeah. <laughs> But you were the real boss, Geraldine. No, I'm not. I'm afraid now. I'm only the Geraldine, worker. Geraldine, you're lucky. I'm only the worker. It's That's not nice to be the real boss. Perfect. Yeah. All right, Geraldine. Okay. Thanks for that. Thank you. known as a sportsman's bar really. You're very much into sport, the whole family. I'm sure the family are all into sport. You could, you could, you wouldn't know where to start between horses, greyhounds and uh, I, I played rugby myself for a long number of years uh, with Corinthians and a, a few stints with Connacht and but uh, at the moment now it's, it's, it's GA at the moment because my sons are playing for Garton, they're representing Galway at underage so 
It's a lot of GA at the moment, but everything from dogs, horses, everything is discussed here at some stage. Yeah, and don't leave out the golf. And don't leave out the golf, the golf, no one, no one plays a good bit of golf. As well as the more established businesses, a number of newer businesses have opened in Gort in recent years. The Gallery Cafe, open and run by Sarah, has been a huge success. Originally opened in the square, the Gallery Cafe provided the ideal spot to sit and watch the world go by or relax in with a coffee. Sarah and the Gallery Cafe recently moved to larger premises on the main street. Since moving there, Sarah has been able to offer a more extensive menu. And now the Gallery Cafe is a favourite with many people both from Gort and further afield. A number of Brazilians have also successfully set up businesses here in Gort over the last number of years, including Nilton, who owns the Square Internet. Now we have Nilton here from Brazil. Nilton, how long are you in Ireland? Over nine years, nine and a half, yeah. Nine, very good. Very and is good. your family here with you? Thank God, yes, all of them. Uh, you have Wife some... and two kids, yeah. Wife, Wife and two yeah. kids, and are the kids going to school? Yes, Manuela, she's uh, only a baby, she's a year and a year and nine months. She's going to the crash, just up to the burning field, crash. And Marie Lisa, she's nine years old. And she's the, she's in the third year in the convent school with Sister John. Mm. And you you settled in very well in Ireland? Yes, thank God, yes I did, yeah. Feeling comfortable, yeah, and have my own business. And Could you tell us a little bit about your business now, what you do here? Um, first of all, our main uh, service here is internet access. So whoever needs uh, internet access, safe internet access, and very fast. And uh, also we do a lot of printing, so we do need to print anything up to A3 size. It can be color, black and white, and great quality. Yes, mm. we have the facility. And binding, laminating, uh, selling balloons, uh, helium balloons, selling coffees. Yeah, it's most of the, yeah, and flyers. We prepare some flyers and business cards. That's it. Do you design the flyers? Yeah, we can prepare them. Mm. It's most no problem. <laughs> Hello, Marcus here from Brazil. Marcus, how long have you been here in Ireland? Um, three years. <laughs> how do you like it? <laughs> Sorry. And Marcus, when you came to Ireland first, what did you work at? It's the work with the Um just 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 to dress it. Just okay. to salon. Just to eat salon. Salon? Yes. And did you do that in Brazil as well? Yes. Just, um, In addition to running businesses, the Brazilian population in Gort brings much colour and life to the streets. Every year the Quadrilla Festival held in the square sees Brazilians from Gort as well as other parts of Ireland taking part in this traditional dance festival. 
celebrating the Latin spirit of the Brazilian population. Oh,